Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to be looking at is it important to feed your corals and if so, what do we feed them? So I don't really consider myself as a beginner into the hobby anymore. Um, I think the results of my tank and the coral growth that I've got show that you know I, I know a little bit about what I'm doing I don't by no means I don't consider myself an expert but I know the basics and sometimes I've found that out the hard way um, you know it takes time it takes effort and it takes mistakes for you to learn from them mistakes to be able to you know fully or even partly understand this hobby and when I started in the hobby um, I can remember getting my first coral, which was um, a zoanthid. Wasn't any names back then when I started, they weren't really names, they were just colours. And I remember I got my first mini colony, it had about 10 heads on or something like that. And the second thing I purchased was reef roids. Um, it, it was my impression that if you had corals, you had to feed them. Now this isn't necessarily true, um, I have had big periods of time where I didn't feed specifically any corals. I think if you've got a smaller tank, I would advise not dumping heavy loads of coral food into your tank. It can just pollute the water, it causes high phosphates, high nitrates, which will then lead you to all sorts of different problems down the line. So. I've experimented in a few different ways with a few different foods and I seem to have found something that works okay for me. Now obviously all different people are going to be able to get a varying amount of, of coral growth. Um, there's a lot of different things that come into play. It's not just about feeding them, it's, you know, your light, your water, flow, different things like that. Predominantly, my tank is, is more heavy on Zoas and, at the moment, LPS. So I've got quite a few Hammers, um, Duncans, two different, three different colonies of Duncans in here. Um, and then Zoas, and I feel like probably the coral that's, or the thing in the tank that's got the most of is Aptasia. Um, but that's that's a story for another day. So what I like to feed my corals is something that we've got in here, which you've probably seen by the, uh, the picture of the video, is Polyp Lab Refroids. It's to me one of the best, if not the best. Um, obviously, everybody's going to have their own choices on what they use, preferences is the word that I'm looking for, um, but this just works for me, it's really really fine, I've not really put it on any corals that don't want to eat it, um, and you only need a tiny amount, which is more than ideal, but because you only need a small amount, it's so easy to go overboard and then mess everything up, which is why I would suggest, you know, if you have, say you have a two foot cube or a three foot or a four foot tank, you know, anything around 50 US gallons upwards or 150 liters upwards, then I would maybe consider feeding. Anything under that, so when I've had a fluval evo, which is only like 13 and 13.5 gallons, I never used to feed my tank. Not with powdered food like that it just it didn't seem right for me so as I said I do sometimes vary it up and I do sometimes have other preferences Vitalis or Vitalis um, LPS coral pellets they're only 1.5 mil they're quite soft you know there's no hard they don't float I'm getting ready for some more of these really I don't want to leave 
be able to see these. But a really small, soft, crumbly pellet. Now I like to add, when I'm feeding my corals, probably only do it once a fortnight, sometimes once a week, depending on how much time I've got to sit around the tank. Um, I usually try and aim to feed if I'm planning on doing a water change in the day after or even the same day. Um, if I'm doing it the same day I'll feed sort of like late morning and then do the water change in the afternoon. It just means that you know any excess nutrients that are in the tank I'm trying to get them out as quick as possible before they can develop and turn into uh, phosphate and nitrate. So. I'll just show you what I do basically to, to mix this food up. Um, again, people do it all different ways. Some people target feed, some people broadcast feed. What I usually do is start out by target feeding. So I'll just isolate one coral that I want to feed, whether it be, you know, Duncan's or Acan or Blasto. I'll turn all the flow off in the tank I don't want any of this food going straight into the overflow and getting stuck in the, the sponges and the floss. That's just wasting it. So I will turn all the flow off now and I'll bring you over to my little cup of water, what I've got, and show you how we do it. So this is how I personally make the food up, um, the coral food. You don't have to do it this way. But this is how I do it. Before feeding my corals, I'll always get my pot of fish food. So in here I've got some frozen mice sandwiched with garlic, one cube of krill and one um, just like a mix. So it's got brine shrimp pods, oyster eggs. It's got all sorts in there. Always feed your fish before you feed your corals because your fish will go and try and take it out of the coral's mouth. And then what I've got here is just like a little plastic cup. Um, there is, I don't measure this out, but just for video purposes, there's just over 40 mil of uh, tank water in there. And what I'll do is get a level, level little spoon that comes with the roof, refroids pop that in there but honestly I cannot reiterate it enough do not overfeed with this refroids it is very potent stuff it's been in the hobby for quite some time plenty of reefers use it and it's because it is so good so I've got my refroids in there just make sure that it's all dissolving and then what I'll get is a good a good pinch of the pellets. Like I said, I have got quite a few um, Duncans and coral uh, hammers and things like that in there, which absolutely love these pellets. So I'll give that, you know, a couple of minutes to for them pellets to start soaking up all that water. And while that's soaking, um, I'll feed the fish. So I will spin you around. So everything's off in the tank. No power heads, no return pumps, no nothing. Um, completely still. And this is one of the times that I enjoy the most is when I can you know, feed the fish, watch how they interact with the food, watch how they attack it. Just a long turkey baster, put that in. And I'll sit and you know observe the fish, do a quick count up, make sure I can see everything. If I can't, wonder where they are and have a look around, see where everything is. Doing a quick count up, everything seems to be there. There's only the file fish. He's just coming out near the GSP now, down near the bottom. Um, he's only been in the tank a few days, so I've, I've been
been, I do actually feed him with the tweezers. Um, I'll get some mice and other things in the tweezers and he'll come up and get that. Usually, you know, when the flow is on, um, it moves a bit quick for him. But as you can see him now, flow is not on. He's getting himself right in there, making sure that he gets some food. And my fish are pigs, so even when they've been fed, it doesn't matter how much food I put in. I I spread my feeding out all throughout the day, so you know I could put four cubes in all at once, and then feed the corals straight after, and my fish would still take it out of the coral's mouth. But another thing, um, feeding the fish first, obviously I don't pre-rinse my frozen food so there's plenty of the smell and the oils in that food getting into the water column now which you then will see a response from your corals. For me, the first thing that I notice is the lobo and that's sort of the coral that needs feeding the most in my tank. I'll give you a quick close up on him.
this is the tank a few minutes after feeding the refroids. Target fed quite a few things. Um, Hollywood Stunner, Teal Blasto, Hammers. You can see obviously in the water it looks very... There's lots of particles floating about. Fed that Blasto, which is a quick eater. Still eating some, but it's quick. Took some in, started to puff back out. Dropped some of the pellets on the hammers. You've seen plenty of the, the lobo. Um, mushrooms don't tend to take it in for me, but both of the rock flower nems, they took that in well. Really eating that. And then I've gave some stuff on the frag rack a bit of a blast. So now that I feel like you know everything's had a good five minutes to start ingesting what they want, I don't want to keep that flow off too long. I want to keep it, you know, plenty of oxygen going around the tank. So this is when I'll start turning everything back on. Start with the uh, the MP10. Noisy MP10. That's on. And then I'll turn the return pumps on. And then if you get close down to the, the logo, you'll see what I mean about all that all that mucus that has trapped that food. As soon as you turn these pumps back on, it'll just start blowing it all away. The corals will usually know when they've had enough. If they've, if you put too much food on them, then they'll spit it out, and it looks just like that, where the mucus will just start flying over the tank. Um, aside from just refroids and like solid food, I do, I do sulfur reef, which I know is not te technically food. Um, but I also dose Reef Plus. Um, this I can't give you a proper review on it just because I've, this is my second bottle of it. Um, the first bottle was a smaller one. Now, I didn't see any adverse effects, but I don't know whether I saw enough positive effects to to warrant saying this is a really good product. You should buy it. You should try it. Um, I won't do that until I'm, you know, fully set on if it works for me and what results I saw. But for now, it seems to be doing okay, and that's just, you know, concentrated vitamins and uh, amino acids, things like that. And then the next thing I dose for mainly for the zoas is iodide. This is really good for zoa growth. Um, I'm not 100% on schedule with this, so I don't dose it religiously every two days or three days or anything like that. Just probably once a week, I'll add about a cap full in. There is um, obviously instructions and directions. Um, but again, I haven't seen any adverse effects from that. If anything, I have seen good zoa growth in between, you know, mainly on things where I've isolated zoas like the, the scrambled egg rock and on the frag rack where there's no uh, pests, there's no Aptasia, the crabs aren't climbing on them all the time. On the main rock structure, there's plenty of Aptasia, the crabs are always on top of it. The snails are always disturbing them. So I can't really say that it's having a massive effect on them, but they are starting to get fuller. So I'm you know, on this bit up here, what started out as maybe 10 heads has easily gone to 30, 40, and they are starting to take over the rock structure where you can't actually see 
any of the rocks or like that top corner. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I would say on, on feeding. Make sure if you are feeding, feed less than what you think you need to start off with. And you may be not going to notice a big difference in water quality that day or the day after. But if you measure it in May of three, four days, you will notice a spike if you are overfeeding. That's why, like I said, I always try and do it where I can do a water change the day after um, or the same day and try and get some of that out before the chemistry of the water changes too much. If you have any questions about it or anything about how I feed that's not in this video, drop me a message and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, please consider giving us a like and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks guys.